Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order and certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening on Monday the 17th. Uh, if we could just take a moment of silent meditation and I would ask those who might uh, remember the former Governor Jim Holzhauser who we understood passed, passed today and his family. Thank you. Councilman Brown, could you lead us in the pledge, please? All right. Ask the clerk if she would call the roll, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Katati. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. We have uh, four proclamations that we'd like to present this evening. And the first, I would ask our Director of Parks and Recreation. Rhonda Parker, if she would join me, please. Uh, the proclamation speaks to Parks and Recreation Month, uh, whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the city of Durham, whereas Durham Park and Recreation activities are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our city ensuring the health of all residents and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of our city and region, whereas Durham Parks and Recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who have mental, developmental, or physical disabilities, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all residents, and whereas Durham Parks and Recreation programs increase our community's economic prosperity, through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime and reduction, whereas Durham's park and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, whereas Durham parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and produce habitat for wildlife, whereas Durham's park and recreation natural areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors, whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, whereas the city of Durham recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources 
Now, therefore, I, William V. Bell Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim July as Parks and Recreation Month in Durham, and hereby urge all residents to take special note of this observance by visiting our parks, participating in programs, and special events throughout this month. Again, to witness my hand, Corporate Seal, City of Durham, North Carolina, this is the 17th day of June, 2013, and I will present this to Ms. Parker for any comments that she may have. Thank you, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro, uh, Pro Temp, Cora Cole McFadden, Sitting Manager, Tom Bonfield, City Attorney, City Council, and Deputy City Manager. I appreciate the proclamation because July is Parks and Recreation Month, and I would just like to mention just a very couple, a couple of things is that summer camp started for young people today. So we have a nine week camp going on, and we also have our pools that opened up last week and our spray grounds are open. But I really wanted to invite all of you to the city's 4th of July celebration, which will be at the DBAP. And there will be a game. You have to buy tickets for the game, but at the bottom of the inning, the gates open up for anyone who wants to come in and participate. We have fireworks scheduled for 9.15 after comments from our officials. And the American Tobacco Campus and the Durham Bulls and Capital Broadcasting are working with us. There will be a jazz concert going on from 6 to 8 and there'll be uh, performers strolling around, so there'll be a lot of things going on for the whole family. So we hope you'll come out and join us and celebrate the July 4th. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'd like to ask Donald Long, Director of Solid Waste. If Donald would join me. Some of you probably saw some of the employees as you came through the lobby this evening. Uh, you might have eaten a piece of cake like I did, but uh, the, these are employees that probably everyone in the city gets an opportunity to see at some point in time in terms of the service they provide. Uh, and without the service they provide, our city probably would really be in pretty bad shape. And it's not to say that all cities don't have uh, waste collection uh, departments, but I, I think our employees in particular do a super job in, in the, the work that they do. Uh, this recognition is Solid Waste Employees Appreciation Day, <coughs> and it speaks to the fact that where solid waste management employees provide a very essential and vital service handling the collection of solid waste of our citizens, where solid waste management employees are exposed to the dangers of working in high traffic areas, braving elements on a daily basis and work very hard, where solid waste management employees performing in their daily duties help reduce the spread of disease, reduce blight, and serve as community ambassadors, whereas the Solid Waste Management Department strives to be leaders in the area of technology and good stewards of the environment, whereas the Solid Waste Management Department is a diverse community represented by all races, trees, genders, and operate efficiently in the collection of waste materials, whereas the City of Durham is a leader in the state in the efficient collection of solid waste materials and its appreciation of solid waste personnel. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim June 17, 2013, as Solid Waste Employees Appreciation Day in Durham, and do further call upon fellow residents of the City of Durham to observe this day and do his or her part to recognize the employees of the Solid Waste Management Department that work daily to complete a very, very difficult job. Witness my hand in Corpus Hill, City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 17th day of June, 2013. And present this to Donald for any comments that he might have. <laughs> I'm not a solid waste employee. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of City Council, Mr. Bonfield, Mr. Ferguson. Um, first of all, I want to say that Solid Waste Employees Appreciation Day, in my world, that's every day. Every day they go out, they hit the road, they do a very, very, very good job. Uh, the Solid Waste Association of North America, our professional association, has designated today as Garbage Man Appreciation Day. I didn't particularly like that. I thought it kind of devalues what we do, 
and it devalues hardworking folks. So I changed it to the title that we have it as today. Uh, the employees of this department will continue to work hard for the citizens of Durham. And on behalf of those hardworking employees, thank you all very much for the acknowledgement. I would ask uh, Donna DeLong if she would join me, please. How you doing? Donna is president of the Durham Regional Association of Realtors and Durham Regional <laughs> representative from Crayons 2 calculation, calculators. And OK. Well, I'm going to let you all do all that you want to do, huh? <laughs> I'm just going to present the proclamation. <laughs> but this, this is, has to do with um, buses, but also has to do really with education and school supplies in Durham Public Schools. Uh, where school supplies enable and inspire school success, where 62% of students in Durham Public Schools qualify for free or reduced price lunch and unlikely to be able to afford the supplies they need for their education, Whereas distributing needed supplies support, supports, supports Durham's residents, students, and teachers. Whereas since 2002, the Durham Regional Association of Realtors has collected donations of school supplies in the months of July and August to enhance the learning opportunities of students of Durham Public Schools. Whereas crayons to calculators have provided over $350,000 of supplies to Durham schools and is growing. And whereas the city of Durham recognizes that the efforts of the entire community can help ensure that all students and teachers have the tools needed for a successful learning experience. Donation bins will be available in real estate firms all over Durham or at the Durham Regional Association of Realtors at 4236 University Drive in Durham, North Carolina. Realtors will fill the bus with supplies and deliver to Dr. Lewis Farabee, the Durham Public Schools Chief of Staff on August 27, 2013. Crayons to calculators will facilitate an equitable distribution of all collected supplies to support Durham Public School teachers and students. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim August the 3rd, 2013, as 2013 Field the Bus Day in Durham, and hereby encourage and call upon the citizens of Durham to observe this day by contributing classroom supplies to ensure that students and teachers have the necessary tools needed to achieve a positive learning opportunity. I witness my hand in Corpus Hill, Durham, North Carolina, this the 17th day of June, 2013, and I'm going to present this to these two young ladies and let them introduce themselves as who they really are. I'm Amy Cummings. I'm the Executive Director of Cranston Calculators, and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who provides supplies um, for our school students. Thanks. Donna DeLong, Durham Regional Association of Realtors President. Thank you very much for the acknowledgement. Thank you. Shane Lowe. Oh. Michael, how you doing? Uh, this recognizes Olympic Day, whereas for over 100 years, the Olympic movement has built a more peaceful and better world by educating young people through amateur athletics, by bringing together athletes from many countries in friendly competition, and by forging new relationships bound by friendship, solidarity, and fair play, whereas the United States Olympic Committee is dedicated to coordinating and developing amateur athletics activity in the United States to foster productive working relationships among sports-related organizations, whereas the City of Durham promotes and supports amateur athletic activities involving Olympic and Paralympic sport, whereas the City of Durham assists organizations and persons concerned with sports and the development of athletic programs for able-bodied and disabled athletes regardless of age, race, or gender, whereas June 23rd is the anniversary of the founding of the modern Olympic movement representing the date on which the Congress of Paris approved the proposal of Pierre de Coubertin to found the modern Olympics. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do 
do hereby proclaim June 23rd, 2013 as Olympic Day in Durham and hereby urge all citizens to take special note of this observance with appropriate ceremonies and activities. And witness my hand, Corporal Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 17th day of June, 2013. And present this to Shane for any comments that you may have. Um, just wanted to thank Mayor Bell and the City Council for uh, proclaiming June 23rd, Olympic Day. Thank you. Before I um, ask for comments from the members of the council, I, I failed to do something I had planned to do at our last council meeting. I, I, just, I just didn't do it. Uh, we all know that we, and again, when we talk about the Olympics, it just reminded me again, uh, we're a city of champions in, in many ways, uh, not the least of which is in athletics. And we all know that uh, Duke University uh, was a champion in the lacrosse conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess about three or four weeks ago, and I just think it's appropriate that we acknowledge them, and Mr. Manners, if you could prepare a letter for my signature on behalf of the City Council to Duke University and the coach of that team. Uh, having said that, let me ask you, are there other comments from members of the Council? Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Good evening. I'd just like to again recognize the presence of my new godson, Emmanuel Coleman. He asked if I would be his godmother. <laughs> and so I will proclaim publicly that I am now your godmother. <laughs> Stand and let the people see who my new godchild is. <laughs> he is an eight year old uh, student at Eno Valley Elementary School. And um, I'm very proud of him. Can I ask Councilman Schuler? Well, I wasn't going to comment, but since we're doing recognitions, I wanted to recognize my former colleague on the school board, Pastor Frederick Davis, who's here tonight. Uh, when I left the school board, Pastor said he was going to be right behind me, but I think we're about six years in, Pastor, and you're still there. So, but good to see you tonight. I, I don't often look at Facebook, but I just happened to open Facebook, and I saw that Deputy manager Wanda Page has an appointment for four years to the Board of Visitors of the UNC system. Let us give her a round of applause. Stand up, Wanda. <laughs> stand. She's, she's sort of bashful, and so she won't stand, but congratulations. I, I want to announce that um, on Wednesday, July the 31st at 9 o'clock a.m., I uh, would ask the council to meet in the council, city council conference room for the purpose of doing performance evaluations of the city manager, city attorney, and city clerk. And I understand the clerk has coordinated that with everybody, so uh, everybody's schedule is, should meet that. And we'll we're, we're go with the city manager, city attorney, and city clerk in, in that order. Are there any other comments? If not, we'll proceed with the <coughs> priority items by the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Good evening, everyone. Uh, two priority items this evening, agenda item number 20, which is the proposed fiscal year 14 planning department work program. Uh, this item needs to be referred back to the city administration. And agenda item number 29, uh, mini assessment role for sewer main on East Cornwallis Road. Uh, this item also needs to be referred back and will be rescheduled for the uh, first uh, meeting in August. Thank you. Motion on the city manager's part. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Okay. Recognize the city attorney for any priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Likewise, recognize the city clerk. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, item 38 has been added to your agenda. It's a supplemental item. It's an ordinance setting the filing fees for candidates to municipal office in the city of Durham for the election coming up in November of this year. Uh, entertain a motion to recognize the city clerk's priority item. So moved. Second. 
It's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. Passes six to zero. All right. Uh, we will proceed with the agenda. Uh, of course, the consent agenda items may be approved with a single motion. If a council member or a person from the audience chooses to remove the item, uh, we'll do that at the appropriate time and recognize the comments. And again, I'll just read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Uh, number one is Citizens Advisory Committee reappointments. Item two is the Durham City County Environmental Affairs Board reappointment. Item three is street acceptance. Item four is FY 2012-2013, amendments to the budget ordinance, grant project ordinances, and internal service fund spending plan resolution, a resolution for using contingency funds and acceptance of a donation. Item five is fiscal year 2013-2014 budget, 2014-2019 capital improvement plan. Mr. Mayor. Recognize Councilman Shule. Mr. Mayor, I don't want to pull this from consent, but I do want to note that uh, I would like my vote on 5D to adopt an ordinance to establish a monthly rollout cart solid waste fee to be uh, recorded as a no. Uh, I have made my case on this known at uh, the previous meeting and also at the previous work session and uh, did not prevail, but uh, I, I continue to feel that this is regressive and uh, we'd be better served financing this in another way. I do know how badly we need this, uh, the, the, uh, the trucks and so forth that this is paying for, but uh, I feel that uh, we could be doing this in a better way, Mr. Mayor, so I'd appreciate it recording a no vote on that for me. I recognize the Councilman Stewell's remarks on that. I recognize Councilman Katari. Uh, similar to Councilman Shul, I have the same concerns and would have preferred to fund this um, with the property tax increase. Um, I do support the um, additional vehicles for the solid waste department. So just want to record 5D as a no vote. Thank you. Clerk will recognize that at the appropriate time. Uh, item six, is, wow. Item six is approval of the assignment, assumption and modification of the loan to Price Steel Place Housing Inc. Item seven is mortgage loan originating underwriting agreement with SunTrust Mortgage Inc. Item eight is approval of an economic development initiative, special project, sub-recipient contract between the City of Durham and Calvary Ministries of the West End Community, Inc. Item nine is FY14 agreement to fund downtown Durham, Inc. for city economic development programs. Item 10 is contract for city services and programs for the downtown Durham Municipal Service District, FY 2014. Item 11 is Ninth Street infrastructure project development agreement between the City of Durham and CP. GPI Regency Irwin LLC. Item 12, a bids term contract for hydrolytic acid, acid, 800 tons. Item 13 is bids term contract for sodium hypochlorite, 936,000 gallons. Item 14 is bids for term contract for liquid ammonium sulfate, 4,560 tons. Item 15 is bids term contract for liquid sodium hydroxide, 2,000 tons. Item 16 is Carolina Theater Agreement Extension. Item 17 is Compensation and Classification Plan Recommendations. Item 18 is Employee Assistance Services. Item 19 is 2013-2014 Benefit Recommendations. Item 20 is Proposed FY14 Planning Department Work, pro work Program. Item 21 is Duke Energy, yeah. I just read it, but I have it here. Uh, we'd accept it as the manager's supplemental uh, pri uh, priority agreement. Item 21 is Duke Energy Power Pole Replacement and your driver streetscape. Item 22 is under local agreement between the town of Hillsborough and the city of Durham regarding disposition of municipal solid waste generated in the town of Hillsborough at the Durham transfer station. Item 23 is sharp rental agreement to multifunction print devices, agreement number 1681503. Item 24 is passed through agreement with Durham County for the allocation, disbursement, and accounting of Federal Transit Administration, Section 5316 funds. Item 25 is the grant project ordinance and agreement between the City of Durham and North Carolina Department of Transportation for an apprenticeship intern program at data. Item 28 is outdoor passenger information systems project. Item 27 is bus refurbishment contract award and items 28 through 32 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Entertain a motion to approve the Senate agenda with the exception of item 20 and 29. So moved. Second. 
That's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero with Council Member Council Members Katati and Shule voting no on the monthly solid waste fee. Before we move to the uh, general business agenda, public hearings on assessments and improvements, uh, since we have uh, adopted the budget uh, with the indicated comments, uh, there's an item, and I had some discussion with the city manager on this side. Uh, some of you may or may not know that there's been a concern raised by the Board of County Commissioners in terms of uh, funding of the warrant program. Uh, I've had a discussion with the sheriff and explained to him, uh, from my viewpoint, uh, why we made that decision at the time we did. Uh, but there's also been some concern that maybe the county might want to do a little bit less in terms of planning. Uh, I've told the manager I, I support that. I mean, my, my position would be I, I think, given what we're seeing, that you know, quite frankly, we might be doing more planning in the city's jurisdiction than the county. And if the county commissioners uh, want to take over the warrant program, uh, I don't have a problem with that. And I don't have a problem with taking over additional money for the planning department. So I'm just throwing that out at the proper time we can have have that discussion. But that would be my recommendation. Recognize Councilman Katani. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, at the work session or the budget planning, I made my feelings clear about the warrant program. I do feel like we've addressed the backlog and we've supported that program for several years, more than we initiated uh, initially planned. I do, I would like to have a much broader conversation about the planning department because I am very concerned about the implications of that um, because of the way the interlocal is structured. When the county reduces funding, it has a proximate or comparable reduction in the city funding, I believe, and so it has a much bigger impact than the, than the initial dollars would look. And, um, you know, joint city county planning has, committee has looked carefully at the work plan and um, I noted previously how much I appreciated the planning director's uh, ability to incorporate the transit, the planning for affordable housing around transit. So we work to build things into that work plan, and I do believe that um, the county reduction in funding will have a significant impact. Of course, we haven't seen that, and we won't see that until August, but I, I just, without having the details, am concerned about that. So I just wanted to reflect that now. Thank you. My, my, my suggestion isn't that we reduce the work amount. Uh, I guess my suggestion is if uh, the county doesn't want to fund it, that uh, we, we look very closely at funding it ourselves and let them go ahead and do the warrant uh, control that they, they raised the question about. And again, I haven't had a conversation with anybody on the county side, and I am just have read some media accounts, and I just had a conversation with the city manager. But I think at the proper time we can have that discussion. Recognize the mayor pro tem. I just wanted to make sure that the the county manager understood that our agreement had ended. Did, was he aware? I mean, this is uh, Do you mean the, the agreement for warrant control? Yes. Well, oh, clearly we, we have been talking about two separate agreements. Uh, one, the, the three month extension of the current agreement. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece was the new agreement that would go into place beginning October the 1st. Mm -hmm. Because I know a comment was made to me by a a couple of commissioners that the city council did not make them aware of it. And I thought that that was done by the administration. So maybe we just, they need clarity on, on the roles that we actually play. I recognize Council Mark. And I'm uh, I just want to take a moment and say that um, I, I agree with you that um, I think that the long range planning in this community is essential. And if the county is not going to fund uh, their portion of it or not fund all of their portion of it, that it does fall to us to, um, to go ahead and fund that because I think that the long range planning, including affordable housing and especially around future transit stops, is just so important to this community that we can't not do that. So you have my support. Okay, recognize Councilman Brown. Yeah, thank you. And um, I basically concur with all that. I basically concur with all that has been said, but uh, I also believe that uh, the last thing we need in this community is to get in a, uh, a battle with those who happen to 
reside on the other side of the street, that is to say the county government. Uh, believe me, folks, at least in my judgment, uh, we have enough challenges in Raleigh as well as in Washington, D.C., and we need to do what we can uh, to work together for all the people of, of Durham County and Durham City. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We move to the General Business Agenda Public Hearings, uh, item 28, public hearing to consider ordering street paving on Clover Hill Place, Dunwoody, Dunwoody Subdivision on the Enabling Act Authority. Uh, good evening, Mayor Bell, members of the council, Robert Joyner, Development Review, Public Works Department. Item 28 is to uh, consider the ordering of street paving on Clover Hill Place in the Dunwoody subdivision from South Riverdale Drive through the end of the cul-de-sac. This is an enabling act authority. Inside the city limits, staff recommends the council adopt a resolution to order the project. This is a public hearing matter. I would ask other comments by members of the council on this item. Uh, is there anyone that uh, would like to speak on this item uh, independent of whether you signed up or not? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on this item. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. No, no, it's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Move to item. 30, approval of proposed amendments to the FY 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, and 2012 to 2013 annual action plans. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of City Council, Reginald Johnson, Director of Department of Community Development. This item is a reconciliation of several years uh, annual action plans, and I will turn it over to William Conyers, a federal programs coordinator, to uh, provide you with the detail. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of City Council. I am Wilmer Conyers, Federal Programs Coordinator for Department of Community Development. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive citizen comments on the proposed amendments for the subject plans as outlined. The citizen participation plan contained in the adopted consolidated plan requires that a public hearing be held for formal amendments that either add, delete, or substantially change any consolidated plan or annual action plan. Notice of this meeting was advertised in the Herald Sun via a general listserv and on the department's website on May 16th and in the Carolina Times on May 18th. The proposed amendments rec represent a reconciliation of grant funds to the city general's ledger and assist with the timely expenditure and administration of community development block grant funds and the home investment partnership funds to meet federal guidelines as prescribed in some recent federal programmatic changes. The proposed amendments represent a reconciliation of approximately $1,357,071.86 to the community development block grant program and $1,699,621 to the home program. The proposed amendments were made available for public review from May 16th through June 17th at the Department of Community Development, the Durham County Public Library, at the City and County Clerk's offices, and at the front desk of City Hall in addition to the department's website and was also distributed via a general listserv. Updates to the proposed amendments as it relates to the home program for the subject annual action plans were also republished on May 22nd, 2013. Later tonight on the agenda, we request that council approve the proposed amendments to the FY 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, and the 2012, 2013 annual action plans. In closing, comments from this public hearing and a summary of any written comments received from citizens concerning the proposed amendments will be included with the submission to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Thank you. Uh, the council has heard the report. Are there questions or comments by members of the council? Uh, let me ask 
this being a public hearing, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item for comments? Let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on this item. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter is back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. I move to item 31, public hearing on proposed sale of 48 lots in Southside. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of council, Larry Jarvis, Department of Community Development. Uh, because some of the buyers of the homes that will be constructed on the lots are not low to moderate income, we are required uh, to ensure that we sell the property at fair market value as determined by an appraisal and to conduct uh, a public hearing uh, disclosing the terms of the sale. So following the public hearing, we would ask that uh, council uh, authorize the sale of the lots <coughs> at the indicated value and authorize the city manager to execute sales contracts and related documents for the conveyance of the lots to the home builders. Thank you. You've heard the report and recommendation of the staff. I don't answer their questions by members of council first. Uh, hearing none, is anyone in the public who would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public has to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter is back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Move to item 32, street closings, 109 linear feet of Irwin Road, street closing, 12000004. Good evening. Steve Madeline with the Durham City County Planning Department. The request before council this evening is a request by Duke University to close roughly 109 linear feet of Irwin Road uh, for a width of about one and a half foot because of a encroachment within the right of way of a existing wall, retaining wall there in front of the hospital. The request has been reviewed by all internal departments and by service and utility providers and no issues have been identified. Staff is recommending approval and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing matter. The public hearing is open. Ask for comments from the council. Hearing none, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on the item. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Matter of fact, before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, the supplemental item, item 38, ordinance filing, fixing filing fees for candidates to municipal office in the city of Durham. It's been properly moved and second. Discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Any other items to come before the council? Recognize the mayor pro tem. Clement was named spectacular man of the year. Um, I think it was given the legacy award for all the contributions he's made. That was on Thursday night and I did attend and represent the council. Thank you. So congratulations, to Howard. congratulations, I'm sure he's watching us. Sir. Any other items to come before the council? If not, the council is adjourned at 7.39 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.